So welcome to Public Relations 3. This is the third in the series of public relations videos. And like I've said before, why public relations should be priority number one. And this is now time to develop your PR program, which does include social media. So think of those two together. And so let's just dig right in. Number one, when you develop your program, you got to dedicate time to the effort. It is so critical. Whether you contract it out, you go hire a, a PR professional, they still need the content from you, you know, so you need to be in charge, even if they're doing. Sometimes people will do a combination in-house and they will contract some of it out. But in a lot of cases, it's just one person trying to do everything. And I know that's a lot of you. So with this, effective public relations takes time, not money. That is the critical thing. So you've got to dedicate time more than you dedicate money to an effective public relations program. And so when it comes to that, when we talk about personnel, and this could be a downtown association, could be a chamber of commerce, it could be a tourism destination marketing organization. You will always have your executive director, that's job number one, and under them is administration. That would be any, you know, like funding and bookkeeping and office management and supplies and all of those things are under that umbrella. But the very, very next job, if you've got the funding to do it, would be a public relations slash social media director. That everything would fall under that, including content development, advertising, graphic design. Everything you do to market your destination should fall under the public relations social media director because they all intertwine. You want your advertising to reflect what you're doing in PR, et cetera. And so that is so important. And then if you have a big enough staff, we worked with organizations that have a staff of like 15 or 20, and we worked with some where it's one person doing all of these. And so, and I'm going to talk about that. And then next, that would be sales. If you do sports marketing or conventions or group tours, those types of things. But this in any organization, it doesn't matter. Even under a city should have a public relations social media director or what they call a PIO, public information officer. And so that is really, really important. Now, when it talks about this person doing PR, whether it's you or somebody else, look at here is the job description. I mean, you got to be an active member of the PRSA, which is the Public Relations Society of America. And yes, that works in Canada as well. You know, you're going to develop an annual PR calendar. I'm going to get into that in a minute. You have to look for public relations opportunities. You got to monitor all your channels. And when I say PR, I'm also talking about Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all of the social media channels plus print publications, what's on the news, what's on uh, Wikipedia, you name it. That's all part of PR. You got to manage what's being said about you. So you're going to monitor everything and then you're going to manage it. And I'm going to show you some ways to monitor all those channels. And then you got to manage the content placement. You know, how do we get it in publications, hiking magazines, online publications, all of those things. And then you've got to develop you know, the pitch stories, you know, ideas to publications, whether they're online, whether they're influencers, you name it. You've got to add photography and be in charge of what kind of photography do we need? Do magazines want? Do online bloggers want? You know, that's still photography. B-roll, which are just little clips. And I'm going to show you that in, in this workshop. And on-camera appearances. I mean, content development, what's written, what's spoken, photography. You know, crisis management, if there's forest fires in your areas or mudslides or natural disasters, you gotta, you've got to be on top of it. We've seen a towns in a state or a province where the forest fire was 500 miles or 700 kilometers away, and yet, yet they think your town is closed. So you got to be on top of those kinds of things. Local outreach, yes, local. Remember, the number one reason people travel is to visit friends and family. So when they visit you, where do you take them? So tourism and downtown centering, obviously, local outreach is part of this. 
And then you got to manage any contracted services, whether you hire PR professionals or, or ad agencies or graphic design agencies, and then pitch and provide content to influencers and channels besides providing content to magazines and publications. And then, you know, manage your press contact database. I mean, this is a big job. And, and, uh, and so at the end of the day, and I did this in the very first presentation, this job is about positioning your community or your business. So it could even be a small business, your nonprofit to promote and protect your brand. And it really is guerrilla marketing. This is the persuasion business. So with this whole thing, you know, when I talked about join the PSR, PRSA, they are a great resource. It's something I want you to, even if you're a non-member, you can see uh, what they do here and you can see there's all kinds of learning opportunities free. And so you don't have to pay to belong. I would recommend you do. I think it's a great organization, but here's the bottom line. You have to dedicate time to the effort. And if you can afford it, it should be a full-time position, social media and public relations. This is where you'll get the best return on your investment of all your marketing. You know, sometimes you can share a PR professional with like the city or the county might have a public information officer. And if they don't have one, maybe they get a portion of their time. And we do want everybody to be working together. You know, that's that's always really, really important. Economic development. So you might say, well, gee whiz, maybe the city and we'll allow our PR professional to do some work for the city, public. That's your local outreach um, with economic development, with the Chamber of Commerce, with downtown, you name it. And if you're it, they, like you're one person doing it all, which we totally get, you should spend one third of your time dedicated to PR, one third. So that means if you're working 40 hours a week and you're probably saying I work 60 hours a week, you know, one third of that time, you know, should be dedicated to public relations. And what I would recommend is that you work like two hours every day. So the first two hours, because public relations is something you do one day a week. It's something that you got to monitor every day what's being said. And I'm going to show you that. And you've got to be on top of it. You've got to steer the stories. You've got to plant the seeds. And so I always recommend like two hours a day out of your eight hours a day. And maybe that's what you do. You set it aside those first two hours. You know, the other thing I would recommend is that we did this video on why it should be priority number one. And we recommend you show that to your city, to your county, to your the people that are funding you. So they understand even your own organization, even your board of directors should be seeing this video. So they understand why you're dedicating two hours every day. If you're a sole person doing everything, it is so critical. And by the way, we can include this with your handouts. This is Asheville, North Carolina, which I'm going to show you what they did. But they even did a job description. You can say, man, we can emulate this. If you go to exploreashville.com, they've got a description for this public relations officer. And it's something you could emulate if you're if you're needing to hire somebody. And granted, Asheville is a large city of about 90,000 residents. But this job description can fit even a small town of 1,000 people or 1,500 or 2,500 the qualifications are still pretty much the same. So that's number one. You have to dedicate time to the effort. Number two is create an editorial calendar. Now, magazines have done this for years, but you need to create an editorial calendar of when you're going to push things out there. If you just Google editorial calendars, you're going to find uh, lots of resources here, like uh, Asana. Asana has actually an, an online program uh, that you can create your editorial calendar. Um, you know, so does Loomly. Uh, there's Monday.com, which we have actually used. Um, HubSpot does a great job. And, and so, you know, there's even videos out there. If you go to HubSpot, you know, you can watch a video, how to create an editorial calendar. 
And so she does a really good job explaining, but doing this is really, really important. So whether it's HubSpot or whether it's Monday.com, this is why you need to do a calendar. So let me, here's our year. So you can see that in the in social media, social media is immediate. January, you would promote winter fun. But on the PR side, you're promoting what's going to happen in May, which might be camping season. You got to pick something, whether it's fishing, camping, hiking, biking, snowmobiling, whatever it is. Your social media is immediate camping. You're you're five months ahead, you know, in social media because that's at magazines are always several months ahead. And even the May issue is going to come out in April. See what I mean? So this is this is what I mean by editorial ca uh, calendar. So in February, you might do romantic destination on social media, but in PR, you're working on June's golf guide or whatever it is you want to promote in June. So we could go through this whole year and you can see social media versus PR. PR, you got to think ahead four or five months. Social media, you got to think this week. And so you can see these are just some ideas. It might not be gardening. It might not be your top three hikes. It might be something else. But you're going to have something specific you're going to promote each month. And so as we go through the year, you know, it might be on the river, on the lake, on the beach, whatever it is. But in PR, you're doing fall color. And as I go through these this whole year here, you can see what's coming up. And now look at in October. I'm already on the PR working for the romantic destination for the following February. See what I mean? And then when we get to that February, your social media is going to match what you're doing for your uh, public relations articles written about you as a romantic destination. So they will dove together, dovetail together. And that's why this is so important to have an editorial calendar. Can you imagine trying to keep track of these, the instant things you need to do in social media versus the long-term things where you're placing things in magazines, you know, and online bloggers and influencers and all of that. And then December, you know, social media during the holidays, but geez, we're already working on your know, gardening next May or April. And so, and then by the way, your photography also has to do that. So you'll be taking pictures in February that you will use the following February for, for your PR. Does that, I hope that makes sense. But this is why keeping this straight, it's really good to have an editorial calendar, your editorial calendar, and you're going to focus on certain things each month of the year. Now, that's number two. Number three, you got to monitor what's being said about you. And that is really, really critical. I mean, Hootsuite has uh, a monitoring program. It, it covers all major social media platforms. But then Nexology, they do the broader web. Um, and all of these you do pay for. You know, there's Mentionlytics, all social media platforms, plus the broader web, where they're they're searching for your name coming up, whether it's, whether it's your personal name whether it is your company name or your your town, city or town. Uh, Reputology, they really look at review sites. So it'll be TripAdvisor, Facebook, Google, Yelp. They look at what's being said in those about you because this is your reputation. And then there's TalkWalker, which also does social media. But you know what? We do one that's absolutely free. These are good, by the way, and I, I recommend them. But you know what? You could easily just do Google Alerts. And if you go in, you could just see Google Alerts, monitor the web for interesting content, you know? And so in this case, you can go there and, and I'm just looking at ours. And so you can, you know, choose what you want. My alerts, you can see we have them there. Um, my, I have my name there since I do public speaking and everything out there. Um, I also have destination development. We actually have another alert for destination development for downtown revitalization. So we're always look at what's being monitored out there. And, and then, by the way, with Google Alerts, you can set it up when you want them. So I tend to get them every day at 1130 in the morning. Now, you may say, well, I want them at eight o'clock in the morning because my first two hours are going to be PR related. I want to know what's being said. And you can do it that way. But you can also say, I want all of my alerts in one. I could say, well, I want a, an alert email 
from for just Roger Brooks and I want a different alert email for Destiny. Now I say, just put them all together. Now there's more than one Roger Brooks out there. And so when I get these every day, you're going to see um, Pennsylvania Route 6 facade program because I've actually, uh, actually did Google Earth for Pennsylvania Route 6 when we were working there. Um, you know, under Roger Brooks, I would get these. And you see prominent athletes share video of support as trans student athlete. Well, that's obviously not me, but I scroll down here and you can see, oh, we were working in Anchorage and Mayor Bronson there is now putting together a whole team to implement what we suggested. So with that, I can easily click on that link and it will take me, you know, right there. There's There are the links right there. I can click on that and it will actually take me to must read Alaska where Mayor Bronson launches project Anchorage task force. And so once I get these Google alerts, I can see what's being said about it. Sometimes I will reach out to the actual, uh, almost every uh, uh, reporter journalist has their contact information and say, Hey, if you want any follow-up from me personally, um, here's my email address. You can reach out to me and I'd be happy to provide any additional uh, support. And, you know, in here, leaning into Anchorage's future, this all came from a Google alert. It's a great way to monitor what's being said out to you, but it's also a great way to leverage what's being said about you. So I could say, and by the way, here I got to tell you something, that we started this organization in 1981. I know, I know, it's longer than a lot of you even been around, but 1981. And I got to tell you that in all of these years, all of our work, I would say 99% of our work has come from public relations. We don't do any advertising. We've never advertised. We've shown, we've been at a couple of trade shows or we'll have a booth every once in a while if we're speaking at a conference. Um, and, and that's mainly for PR more than it's for sales. But I got to tell you, that is the power of getting your name out there. And when your name is out there, leveraging what's being said about you. So, so what happened is when we we're working in Anchorage, um, I spoke in Anchorage, it made the news up there. And then all of a sudden we get a call from Sitka, Alaska. It says, hey, we want Roger in our town. So this is the power of public relations. So send links to that those articles that are written about you to the people that fund you so they can see that they're seeing a good return on your investment. You know, but you can also post those links to your social media channels. Look what Anchorage is doing or or whatever's being said about you, whether it's hiking, biking. You know, you could even, there it is, email the links to your stakeholders and then thank the reporter. Now, they don't always get it right. So I don't ever sit there and criticize them. That's bad omen. Um, but I will say, hey, you know, we're available if you have any follow up. And then number five, you got to look for PR opportunities. And we're doing an entire video just on that. But let me just give you an eye. We talked about editorial calendars, but this is Sunset Magazine. It has a big circulation of several hundred thousand. They're mainly in the Western United States. But they even say, here's what we, we cover, travel and venture, home and garden, food and drink, lifestyle. And you may say, man, that's, we, we want to cater to these readers. And they even tell you in their press kit what, who their audience is. So you can write articles or provide storylines to fit that audience. Look at their social media. I mean, Facebook, they got 500,000 plus Pinterest, 277,000. Instagram, 266 or 236,000. But you know what? Almost every publication out there also has an editorial calendar. And there it says wellness and innovation issue, the garden issue, the annual camping issue. And you may say, whoa, we're a, a really great camping destination. So we want to let them know ASAP, like this time of year, five months in advance, we we wanted to we would love to pitch a story to you about our camping destinations, whether it's state parks, provincial parks, or whatever else you have. So this is what I mean by looking for these. And we're going to get more into that in a separate video. And then, by the way, the next videos in these are all about step-by-step -step process. So we're going to cover creating your press room, how to find those opportunities, marketing to niche groups. So that's all coming up. And with that, let's wrap up this video. 
Number one, you have to dedicate a fixed time for efforts because I know it's so easy to lose that time. Well, today I got to go do a meeting and then it's just gone. You got to have a fixed time and your staff may say, hey, you may say I'm shuttered in from eight to 10 every morning so I can dedicate my time to that. And once they see the results of what you're doing, because you're going to send them links to what's being said, they're going to be support that. Number two, develop your annual editorial calendar so critical because it's hard to keep straight what you need to do in the future versus what you need to do today. And then monitor what's being said about you and then leverage that what's being said about you, particularly the positive stuff, always the positive stuff. And then number five, look for PR opportunities. And next up on our list is public relations for developing your online press room. I can give you the step-by-step directions to doing exactly that. See you there.